Researchers from Microsoft just published a list of jobs that they say will be replaced by AI. But it's junk science. It's time to see why they're wrong and why their nonsense could cost lives. I'm Dr. Jonathan Downey and this is Inside Interpreter. If you've been on LinkedIn recently, this chart of jobs that are on the chopping block to be replaced by AI has been doing the rounds. See that one on the top? Interpreters and translators. Oh no! AI is going to do my job! Panic! Hold on. Why are you panicking? Because researchers say my job is going to be replaced by AI. Okay, and who are these researchers? They work for Microsoft, so they must be right. And does Microsoft have a record of getting this kind of thing right? Well, there was that time they claimed that their machine translation system was better than humans. And it wasn't. Right. And then those times they announced they'd make breakthroughs in quantum physics. And they hadn't. Correct. So would you like to keep panicking? Or shall we proceed to show why these results are nonsensical? Begin the takedown! This article fails the most basic test. The researchers are unaware that translation and interpreting are two very different jobs. Translation takes place after a document, movie, website or whatever is finished. It's all about creating another finished product that will work for whatever purpose the buyer came up with. Translators get to revise their work, can draw from multiple resources, often at the same time, and work with written or signed texts. Interpreting takes place in the moment, at the event, the conference, the church service, doctor surgery, negotiation, appointment, or whatever. Interpreting is all about interaction, understanding social cues, and making split-second decisions. Interpreters can't go back any more than about a sentence to revise their work. Interpreters work with spoken or sign language conversations or speeches. They are different jobs with different skill requirements. They are related, but different. Putting them together in a chart like this is like pairing heart surgeons and plumbers. Sure, they're both about fluid moving through pipes, but you don't want one doing the work of the other. In this video, I'll mostly be talking about interpreting, since that's my area of expertise. Secondly, they seem to not notice that the same word interpreting can actually mean different things. The main task of interpreters and translators, they say, is to interpret language, cultural or religious information for others. Hold the phone. That's three very different kinds of interpreting, often done by different professions. It's going to be impossible to test that in any reliable way. If you don't have clear, accurate definitions, you have bad science. It's as simple as that. So already, this article has one big black mark. Oh, and before anyone says, but the researchers based their views on translation and interpreting from a publicly available source. Yes, I checked that source. The paper relies on the ONET online career database as a reliable source of the tasks involved in different jobs. Well, since that database also lists translation and interpreting as the same job, we should already be suspicious. If we look at the job sheet for translation and interpreting, we can see how many of those tasks are either questionable, only applicable to translation, poorly worded, or just not covered by the tasks tested by the researchers in the Microsoft paper. There are much more reliable sources of what translators and interpreters do. Relying on this one was a bad idea. But things get worse. The main argument of the paper is this. You split jobs into their component tasks using the ONET career database, use over 200,000 Bing Copilot chats and break them into which tasks people were trying to achieve, whether the task was completed and how satisfied people were. You then match the tasks with the highest completion and satisfaction rate to the ONET task for each job and do some maths to see which jobs have the highest matches. That sounds reasonable? Maybe? if we ignore all the previous issues with the job tasks. For translation and interpreting, and probably for many other jobs on the list, it definitely is not reasonable. The reason why people need translation and interpreting in the first place is that they do not understand the other language. Therefore, they are not in a position to judge whether the translation or interpreting is accurate. Translation and interpreting users can't judge the accuracy of translation and interpreting, but they can judge if it's working for them. The doctor's appointment needs the patient to get the right treatment. The sales meeting needs to sell products. The movie needs to entertain people for the right reasons. And we know for a fact that AI interpreting is not very good at passing that test. 
for all sorts of reasons that I discuss here. We could also make much the same argument for some of the other tasks they say that Copilot is good at. They do not perform any checks as to whether the information provided by Copilot was accurate, reliable, or even safe. So when they say that researching healthcare issues had the highest completion and satisfaction rate, we should absolutely give them the side eye. I might be satisfied if Copilot told me that eating bacon rolls every day was good for me, but it wouldn't be good advice. Bad methods make bad science. But it gets worse. Bad science like this is ethically irresponsible and will cost lives. If people believe that the rightness of the information they receive is governed by the completeness of a chat or how many thumbs up it got, then people will take the wrong medicines, receive awful legal advice, and get translation and interpreting that will lead to big mistakes. Junk science like this not only inflates what people think AI can do way beyond the bounds of reality and safety, but poses risks for the future. Young people looking at this chart might decide not to become interpreters or historians or writers because look, AI is taking over. Except there already is a worldwide shortage of good sign language interpreters, making it hard for deaf people to get access to services. The funding for arts and humanities research is perpetually under threat, making it easier for bias and disinformation to flourish. And we already have to wade through swamps of AI-generated slop. We don't need fewer human writers. By publishing misinformed and frankly misleading research like this, the researchers will discourage people from careers that we desperately need. Let me make this clear. Reducing access to competent, professional interpreters costs lives and freedom. People have literally died in hospitals needlessly because of a lack of interpreting provision. And no, AI is nowhere near a good enough substitute. It is completely unethical to pretend otherwise in the face of overwhelming evidence. Firstly, we need to be incredibly skeptical of any forecast coming out of AI companies. AI companies need everyone to keep believing they are the future and not ask too many questions about their actual profitability. The economics mean that big AI companies like Microsoft are massively incentivized to make big claims, even if these claims don't stand up to scrutiny. People will be hurt and perhaps even lose their lives in the process. Secondly, AI research needs multidisciplinary teams. It is simply not good science for papers with claims about AI replacing jobs to be written and published by people who obviously don't understand the jobs they claim are in danger. Thirdly, and finally, we need people to begin to talk back. You're not a Luddite for pointing out that AI claims are spurious, that their systems are financially and environmentally questionable, and that their methods are flawed. That's how science works. We need more critical thinking and engagement, not less. The last time Microsoft pulled something like this about translation, researchers stood up to them, and they learned from their mistake. It's time to do that again. I'm Dr Jonathan Downey, I actually know what interpreters do for a living, and this is Inside Interpreting. <laughs>